Good morning, everyone. We're going to talk today about transitions. And I do have to let you know um, in the beginning that one piece of our agenda that we have, um, Considerations for Children with Special Needs, Ginger Huffman and Mel Woodcock from Birth to Three, um, we're going to facilitate that session or that part of the session. And um, they could not attend today. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a, um, a question submission and then send some answers over the list serve to answer some of the questions about considerations for children with special needs in relation to transitions. Um, but this morning we have with us Monica Delamay, and um, she's going to be talking about the Ready, Set, Go model and utilizing the transition toolkit. And then she'll end with tips and tools for transition data. Uh, we're recording this webinar, as we have done with all of them, and we will have it posted next week. Um, our IT department promised to have it up next week. And they've also, I know that many of you have, many of you have um, said that there was an issue with the website for um, the CQI process in the webinar that we had recorded. It has now been corrected, so your team can actually log on and look at that as well. So. I apologize for that. We don't know how the link got messed up, but it is good to go so you can review the CQI process. Um, at this point, I do want to let you know that the folks that are in the room with us, I have, again, Monica Delamay from the Office of Early Learning and Rhonda Crowley from the Office of Early Learning, Tracy Dalton, the State Head Start Collaboration Director, and from DHHR we have um, Melanie Clark and Missy Smith with us in the room as well. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to hand it over to Monica. All right. Good morning, everybody. I hope you all are doing well. It's Monica Delame here. And we're going to talk this morning about transitions um, with this Ready, Set, Go West Virginia Comprehensive Framework for School Readiness. Many of you have heard about this um, somewhat before, and we are curious as to how the transition toolkit is being used. We have an example today that some of you may have heard about as well um, during the Leadership um, Institute in September. But I just want to take you through Ready, Set, Go. And we're, we're doing this at this specific time for various reasons. But one of the, the main reasons um, that we're doing this at this time of the year is because before we know it, it'll be time for enrollment and looking at transitioning, although it's always a, a good time to look at transitions. We'll be looking at transitions for new enrollees, for children coming up from um, you know, various programs into pre-K and then, of course, into kindergarten. Um, as you may very well know, uh, Senate Bill 359, now that it's um, in place and has been legislated, we have um, readiness looked at as at the status of children at first grade entry rather than kindergarten entry. So one of the things that we have been charged to do is to actually expand, revise, do as needed to the Ready, Set, Go model. And we're actually starting that work next week. Uh, I wanted to let you all know about that because some of you on the webinar are going to be assisting with that process. We know that, that nothing, um, you know, hugely different will occur as a result of that to the Ready, Set, Go model in, in, in the idea that we're definitely going to continue with the supporting families, supporting children, and using that school model, community model, of course, of support for that. So we do know that we need to build into that model how do we support children as they transition um, from kindergarten into first grade as well. So if those of you who are on the webinar and um, we're not asked to be part of the work group. If you, are, if you are interested in assisting with that, I certainly welcome your feedback and welcome your participation to anybody out there. Um, many of you may know my email very well, but if you don't, it's M as in mouse, D as in dog, E-L-L-A-M as in mouse, E-A, at access.k12.wv.us. And it is um, something that you could definitely email me if you wanted to and um, let me know that you're interested. If you can't come to our meeting, 
next Wednesday afternoon at the Department of Education, you can certainly vet the work via email. I'd be more than happy to share as we work on this expansion and revision to this model um, with, with anyone who's interested. So, okay, so what I'd like to do is take you through the current model, the current Ready, Set, Go model. And as you're going through this, as we're going through it together, I'd like you to think about potential ways that we might revise or expand this to include kindergarten readiness, um, you know, looking at this as, at what the children who are in first grade look like um, when, they, when they come to first grade. So just bear with me here just a second. Where is this, Jan? I'm sorry. Whoops. Sorry, is this this one? Nope. Sorry, bear with me. <laughs> this one? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, everybody. Okay. <laughs> this one. Where is it? This one? On the website. Okay, so readysetgowv.com is the website that we utilize, of course, for our school readiness, um, you know, the comprehensive framework. And what we'd like to do is take you to visit uh, the resources that are available on the website. And right here, uh, there, there are a few things. At the end of the webinar, we're going to talk about using... Um, the school readiness, information about school readiness and transitions to make some data-driven decisions. But then also you have a family's guide to school readiness that's available to, for you to share with families. Of course, we have our Facebook page. Um, if you've not liked the Office of Early Learning, you might want to do so. And then we have what we're going to focus on today, which is this Transitions Toolkit. So again, be thinking through the lens of how can I use this or how have I used this with the County Collaborative Early Childhood Team. And then also, what would this look like uh, as revised or expanded to also include um, the kindergarten year. So we have our overview. Again, here's the model as it exists today, knowing that children are at the center of everything and um, have those supportive families who are in turn supported by Ready Schools and then of course the larger community as well. So why readiness? We've had these conversations before about school readiness. We know that nationally the movement of course is that it's not so much is the child ready for school, but is the school ready for the child? Have they had those high quality experiences during the, during the early years to um, help them be ready to go through the transition process to enter school successfully, to be uh, excited about school, and, and there's so much that goes on even before they come to formal schooling. We know that. And so how do we help families understand the importance of all that? and how to nurture children in those ways. So of course taking those expectations off the, off the child and um, really looking at how the school, the family, and the community can support children. Here's the formal definition. Uh, we know that this will be revised because it, it's kindergarten readiness. We'll, we'll be looking at that um, in the coming months as far as how to expand that and still support that but really look at pre-K and kindergarten as those readiness years? The foundation will still be the same. So as you look at this definition, it will be expanded um, to first grade. Um, but the crux of it will still stay the same. Yeah, we're actually really excited about this um, legislation that went through because we know now that kindergarten will be able to be supported as a readiness grade in the sense that um, you know, supporting those programs to ensure developmentally appropriate um, environments and relationships and, and schedules and routines and everything that we need to have in place to um, really offer a standards-based appropriate uh, program for kindergarten children, much like we've worked for years and years to do in, in pre-K. So yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Janet. The foundation is not going to change. So we do have some things in place. We know that the Early Childhood Advisory Council supports um, these efforts. We have 100,000 brochures coming to you soon of early childhood, um, actually, readiness for young children and families, a family's guide to school readiness. And initially, we were 
going to submit those or we're going to provide those to the school systems. But then we thought, how can we get these into the hands of families even earlier than when they come to us or when they come to you at pre-K or kindergarten enrollment? So what we've been doing is working with the Office of Special Programs and um, determining the best way to get these brochures into the hands of the primary care providers or physicians in your areas. So whenever the very young children come for a well baby visit or a well child visit, parents can understand, you know, the very best thing I can do for my child is read to them every day and provide them a nurturing environment and make sure that they get enough sleep. And, and simple things like that that are inherent to all of us, but um, in family friendly language can hopefully be very powerful for our families in our state. So that's something that the Early Childhood Advisory Council has assisted with. Of course, we, we did have the, um, the CQI uh, Quality Improvement Pre-K Advisory Council. That has now morphed into something much bigger as a result of legislation, as a result of changes at the department. And we now have uh, our preschool through fifth grade advisory council and universal pre-K is, is one component of that, obviously, because we have many more grades. We've, we've been charged with a, a third grade literacy proficiency approach that um, we, we just want to make sure that we ensure those developmentally appropriate experiences for, for all children in these early grades. And it's going to take time to um, you know, provide that, that information and to help support teachers and administrators. And so um, you know, with that in mind, we just know that the school readiness efforts are continuing to be supported as well. Um, on this new advisory council, I'm, a, I'm one of the contacts with that, and Tara Beth actually works very closely with us. Many of you have heard Tara Beth speak before about the, um, the June Harless Center's assistance to us with transitions and in, in working with Cabell County. So again, we have our model here. Um, Ready communities. Now, if we were doing a training, if we were doing a workshop, if you do a workshop, we would know that we would ask the question, you know, what can communities do? How can they facilitate this comprehensive school readiness system? That's not the intent today. Again, I want you to think about how you have used these materials with your county team, how you could potentially use them with the county team, and also what do these need to look like or does anything need to change to any of this uh, part right here in particular? with regard to ensuring um, first grade readiness. So of course we would have a different bullets and hopefully you have accessed this before. This, this probably shouldn't be new to any county team because I know we've um, done the, the recess circuit uh, before talking with teams about Ready, Set, Go West Virginia and how you can support um, children and families with that. Ready schools, of course. I've done this workshop many times with principals, with child care directors, with Head Start administrators with county administrators, so lots of folks have heard about um, and hopefully brainstormed ways that they can work with the school system, with the um, with collaborative partners, and to um, just make those children and families feel welcome and part of this process as they transition. I, I think that this the Ready Schools piece will be um, really looked at, and Monica, you can probably elaborate on this as we expand it to first grade. What does ready schools look like in, through this transition process as we look at up to first grade? So mm -hmm. I think that's really important in really looking at developmentally appropriate practices for pre-K and kindergarten children. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it may, there may be some there'll be some additions on this piece of it. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I can see there definitely being some additions on this and maybe even further expansion of the vertical teaming. I know that many of you out there have already done vertical teaming with pre-K and K programs, but now it's time to start engaging those first grade um, programs as well and those educators because we know that children are, you know, as they transition out of kindergarten, the expectation is, you know, different in different areas, but we want those first grade educators to have the expectation that the children leaving kindergarten will have expo been exposed to certain standards and will have progressed uh, over time a certain amount. So much like the kindergarten transition uh, report that's part of the pre-K child assessment system, our intent would be to have the same thing available for first grade teachers as well. So, and we're, we're working toward that and we'll of course give more information as that um, is developed. 
So um, more about Ready Schools here. And then, of course, we have Ready Families, and we ask about, well, what's their role? How do we support them? How can they support children? Basic things here, of course. I, I can't imagine that we would expect anything different, um, though we may wordsmith the language or something. I, I'm not sure whatever the group decides they want. You know, we just want children to understand that, or excuse me, families to understand that all children deserve caring, safe, stable environments. Um, we want them to be able to do those no-cost at-home conversation type, um, you know, things with their children regularly. And of course, we want families to understand that the early years are incredibly important. They're a unique period. When children are in kindergarten, it's not the same as when they're in second grade. It's not the same as when they're in fourth grade. It's not the same as when they're three years old. Um, these years are very unique, and, and there are specific things that, um, that families can do it, you know, whatever your teen decides that would be developmentally appropriate, just thinking about those resources is very important. And then we look at children. What's their role? Of course we know they deserve to have those transitions, those opportunities to engage in those meaningful transitions. And <clears throat> that's where the transition toolkit comes in. We have a transition toolkit. We've talked about, um, you know, where children typically come from when they enter kindergarten. We've gone over this before. Um, typical transitions include maybe pre-K visitation to the kindergarten classroom, like a move-up day or a family orientation. But what else is needed? And, and the toolkit provides many, many different examples of ideas that county teams or schools or programs could utilize with families and with children to help them engage in that transition process. So, again, with our revision and expansion, what does a kindergarten into first grade transition look like? That's a question we'll be asking of this work group. So, Janet, did you want to say something? No. Okay. All right. Brenda, I see that you had said it's hard to hear. Was it just hard to hear Janet, or are you okay hearing me? If you still can't hear, let me know, please. Just Janet. Okay. All right, we'll have her speak up if she talks some more. <laughs> All right, so with this, using the transition checklist, of course, or checklist, we call it a toolkit now, what I would like to do is take you to the toolkit at this time. And actually what we did. Oh, yeah, there's my email. Sorry. I had, I had spelled it for you earlier. And... So now, if you do need my email, feel free to let me know. Uh, if you're interested in assisting with this work, that certainly doesn't mean that you need to do the travel to come to meetings. I'd be more than happy to share with you via email, and, and you could vet the work. You know, the more eyes we get on this, the more comprehensive it will be. So, um, you know, we're, we're very happy for you to look at this as it's developed. We've actually been given a pretty tight turnaround, though. We've been given um, the beginning of February as to when we'd like to have these materials ready. And, of course, that's so they could be available to the county teams and to programs um, for the upcoming school year. So the toolkit's actually down here. Um, with the transitions tool, transition toolkit, you know, I hear of many, many county teams using this. You can see that as we're looking at the expansion and revision of this, there are things that will certainly um, be foundational, like Janet mentioned. But um, based on what this graphic morphs into, um, you know, whether there are changes to it or not, the work group wants those or not, of course we would still identify the Ready, Set, Go West Virginia component that is best um, identified through this particular activity. For example, providing families with information on kindergarten programs and or services, including enrollment requirements and registration. Well, first grade registration, you know, I mean, they, the, as a first time enterer, of course, they would move up into, kinder, or into first grade after kindergarten or they would move up into kindergarten after enrolling in pre-K. So, you know, there are things that wouldn't necessarily have to be done if they're done already to, as a first time enterer. So, a lot of this may not change dramatically. Well, and I just want to emphasize that 
if a child attends pre-K, a lot of that entry stuff is already done. And we, we encourage counties, um, and counties are becoming very, very good at not doing things when, if, if they already have information, enrollment information through pre-K, not to um, redo some of that stuff, but to utilize information from the previous year for the next year's enrollment. Absolutely. That's, that's definitely something to think about. Um, we don't want to make this burdensome for families or for staff for this, for enrollment. Um, so anyway, you can go through this and, you know, in, in having spoken with, with many of you about this, I know that there are examples from each of these areas that um, you have done before. What's wrong? I'm going to slow down. I'm hoping I'm not making you all car sick about this. So. <laughs> Sorry, she that said I needed to slow down. So I'm going too fast with the, the scrolling. I apologize, folks. Um, but yeah, there, there are elements of each of these activities that I know many of you as county teams have engaged in. Um, you've actually done additional things as well. And so if you have done transitions to support children and families that are not identified on the transition toolkit currently, please let me know. We can add these to the resources. And we can, um, you know, add the add those things to the actual toolkit. We'd be more than happy to do that as well. There have been a lot of exciting things that county teams have come up with to support families and their staff in transitions. Some of them have included like transition activities at the beginning of the school year um, with pre-K and kindergarten teachers, and and just different activities, transition activities that include teachers and parents, um, you know, teaming and having team meetings. So there are some really cool things happening out there. And if you've done one of those really cool things, like Monica said, please share so that we can, you know, disseminate those ideas across the state. You guys get really creative with ways to support families sometimes. And it's very impressive. Yeah, we could definitely, um, we can catalog the toolkit. We can, we can make it more in-depth and in, um, you know, the, depending on the information we get from you all, then we can definitely, um, you know, embed additional stuff into the toolkit. So, and then here is the the last major activity. Again, we may we may even add more activities um, with our revision and expansion. So. At this point, hopefully, um, every county team who's on the webinar has at least seen the toolkit before, and, and I know that many, many of you are using them, or using the toolkit, or have used the toolkit. And even if you haven't used the toolkit, I'm pretty confident that you've probably done many of these things without even having known that they were part of the toolkit. So, I, I would like to provide you with an example of some transitions um, of a transition process that has gone on um, as a result of the Ready, Set, Go model. And basically, what? make it smaller, sorry. There we go. All right, some of you heard Tara Beth Brumfield. She's the Chief Development Officer of the June Harless Center uh, out of Marshall University speak about transforming transitions at the Leadership Institute, but I did want to share her slides with you and, and give you an idea of what is possible regarding transitions um, in early childhood. So, with Cabell County um, Schools and the June Harless Center and the Department of Education, I believe uh, the June Harlow Center was actually funded from the Benenum Foundation to do some novel things, but that doesn't mean that just because you don't have funding from the Benenum, the Benenum Foundation doesn't mean that you can't do some of these things, certainly. So um, many of you are really good at figuring out how to braid funds and to, um, you know, to, to use, to, to, to leverage those monies um, to, to serve children and families. So that's something definitely to think about as you do this. So they wanted to develop a set of transition activities for children and families and educators. They wanted to support the early learning scale. They wanted to create some transition teams. They wanted to pilot in Cattle County, which they certainly did. And then, of course, they, they wanted to host a symposium to look at the results after, um, after they, they finished with this project and then have a plan 
for potential statewide dissemination. And when they say dissemination, I'm sure they, they mean availability of this um, process for other counties. So, um, of course, in 2012, they did a summer institute of three days with educators, administrators, pre-K, kindergarten teachers, teaching assistants, and even parents. They've done a follow-up throughout the, the previous school year uh, based on that to assist with developmentally appropriate practices, shared meaning, which is huge, really. And then after that, um, they had transition camps for families and children. They completed a five-day summer institute this past summer, and then also additional transition camps for pre-K and kindergarten children in their school environments. And there were a variety of environments, actually, four elementary schools and a collaborative partnering school as well. And I believe that um, knowing how collaborative county, uh, Cabell County is with Head Start, um, I'm sure there were Head Start collaborations going on within um, these schools as well, in, in at least many of them. So we know that looking at this, this model, these um, teams from these different schools work together for over a year and hopefully are continuing to work together in this transition process and we're able to provide um, information for families and children and to ease that transition into um, pre-k and then into kindergarten. So um, I'm anxiously awaiting the, the June Harless Center's final report on this on how they've, um, what their findings were and if they have recommendations for um, potential best practices uh, to support the Ready, Set, Go model. So that's an example of something that worked. There are 54 other examples out there, I'm sure, of things that have worked in your counties. This was just an example from Cabell County. So if you'd like to learn more about that, though, Tara Beth is probably the contact uh, for that. And if you email me, I can, I can get you in touch with her. She sends her regrets for not being able to be here today, certainly. So, all right. Um, at this point, we are going to let Janet talk for just a second, and then I'll be back. Okay. We know that um, when we were planning uh, for the transition webinar, we know that there were lots of questions um, that counties had, and, and part of the reason this topic was selected as a webinar topic was because there were questions about consideration for children with special needs into and out of pre-K. And um, like I said in the beginning, originally Ginger Huffman and Mel Woodcock had scheduled to be here, but because of a, um, a need to be out supporting some other staff, um, they could not make it today. So what we wanted to do was um, afford the opportunity for you all to have some questions vetted through Ginger and Mel. And so what we told them that we would do was um, go ahead and, and, you know, put it out there that we, we really want your questions. Um, so if you don't mind, email me at jbach at access.k12.wv.us and in the um, subject line put um, special needs transition questions or something to that effect. And then we will provide those to um, Mel Woodcock and Ginger Huffman. And then what we'll do is put the questions together with some answers um, and some guidance. And then we'll send it out through the pre-K listserv. OK. All right, thank you, Janet. Um, the, the next thing that we're going to talk about is the agenda here, okay. Sorry. Okay, well the last thing on the agenda is tips and tools for transition data. And I did want to talk with you just, just briefly about the kindergarten transition reports. Hopefully many of you have used these in the past and um, we, we know that we want kindergarten teachers to be able to Look at the status of children who were in universal pre-K, what they were like when they exited pre-K, basically. Um, looking at them across the board as far as their holistic development uh, throughout domains. And then also any objective comments that the, um, the preschool teacher would have for the kindergarten teacher. 
Now, the, the interesting thing that we found is that some of these uh, kindergarten transition reports have actually been used as, an, you know, as a tool to learn not only about those children who are in universal pre-K, but also to provide the kindergarten teacher and her, his or her assistant with um, time to focus more on those children who didn't go to pre-K when they come to kindergarten. Because if I'm able to get a developmental snapshot of children who were in pre-K, then okay, I know a little bit about them. I know a little bit about what they were like last year and how much they progressed and how they grew and, and the specific domains that I might need to really focus on more than others. When other children come to kindergarten and they've not been in a program before, you don't typically know much about them. And so that would give the kindergarten teacher a, a little bit more time to um, tune in or to hone in on what those children's um, strengths and challenges might be. So we know that that, that data that, that teachers get from the, the transition report can be very valuable. Um, we, we've had discussions in the past about how sometimes when teachers, though no matter how well intended, provide a kindergarten teacher or any teacher with a two-inch notebook of portfolio evidence, the, the kindergarten teacher or any teacher may not, one, have, have you know, enough time dedicated to look through those, and then also, what does it say? If there are specific examples of evidence, what does this mean in the scheme of things? How is this child growing? And that's what we're excited about the transition reports um, to be able to provide for those teachers. And um, our intent for kindergarten, of course, we know we're piloting a reporting process for formative assessment data this year. And we have 13 counties helping out with that. We greatly appreciate their, their patience. They're finishing up a national study right now with NEAR, and that will be finished up by, by the winter break. We also know that we'll be asking all kindergarten programs to report um, on evidence twice starting next year, two times a year starting next year, and that's how it's written into the draft of Policy 2510 of which many of you are very familiar with, and that will be going on uh, public comment very soon for, um, you know, for, for your review. So I see um, Sherry Hetzel, 15-16 mandate, five-day, full-day. It's actually 16-17, right, right, folks? 16-17 is the five-day, full-day, and that will be a webinar address. Is it 15, 16? We'll clarify that. So I know that, that those are questions that many of you have, and I know Dr. Hetzel does as well. She's, she's typing some questions to me about that. That's something that um, the team here will work to um, develop a webinar for that as well. Am I correct, ladies? And they're checking on that. Bear with us. So, you know, th this is an exciting time for our early learning readiness grades in West Virginia as evidenced by some of the changes that have happened as a result of um, the Senate Bill 359. We really, um, we know that change and transformation can sometimes be difficult, but that's how we grow and um, that's how we continuously improve our practice. So we're, we're definitely excited overall uh, about some of these things. We're particularly thrilled about the idea of kindergarten and pre-K being um, together programmatically and identified that way in policy through 2510. And, and honestly, in thinking about the lens of today's webinar, supporting transitions, I think that that move alone will help families and children ultimately um, <clears throat> with regard to uh, having those successful transitions into school and successful transitions from kindergarten into first grade. So um, I know that the, the ladies here are doing some follow-up about some of the questions um, about the, the full day, five day. They'll be providing information. Um, they're working on, actually later today, um, a, they're, they're working on an agenda for a stakeholder meeting for policy 2525 revisions. Many of you have been asked to assist with that process as well, and of course you'll get to see that when it comes out on public comment later this spring. Is that right? Anyone? Okay, so did I cover everything I was supposed to cover? 
Okay, they're shaking their heads. Hopefully you all are too out there. So, what's that? Oh, the school readiness profile. Yes, I, I should mention the school readiness profile. Many of you have used the school readiness profile from 2011-12 data. And I should let you know that I'm working feverishly to get the elements of the 12-13 uh, school readiness profile ready for publication. We've already sent out our request for bids, and we're ready to roll with all that. We're hoping to have it ready earlier this year. In fact, I know we, we will. Um, it should be ready toward the beginning of February, so hopefully that can help with some of your decisions, um, your data-driven decisions as well. Many of you have submitted examples to me via email of how your team used the readiness profile last year, and I greatly appreciate that. If any of the rest of you have specific things that you use that profile for, or specific techniques that you use to, to, to use the data, or decisions that you made as a result of the data for your county, um, shoot me an email. I would much appreciate it because people are wanting to hear how are others using this. And that would, that would be definitely a good resource that we could share um, with each other to know how some teams are using it and then other teams might not have ever thought about. So, um, Okay, so Janet's looking in policy right now. Janet, you want to speak to that about the full day, five days? Someone had a question. Yes, it's beginning no later than the school year 2016-2017. Yeah, so 16-17, folks. All right, so um, if you have questions, let me know. If you have um, things that you would like to address to Ginger Huffman and Mel Woodcock, let Janet know. And we hope you have a wonderful day. Janet's going to close us out. Um, I'm just going to take you back to the website where Monica was able to pull um, the framework off of just so you all have a reference as we end today. And then we're going to conclude with just um, a, a resource to share within your community um, the West Virginia Help Me Grow website. Um, Tracy Dalton's going to end and um, share that website. So I have the website pulled up for Ready, Set, Go. And at the bottom of the page is the school readiness profile and the other resources that Monica talked about, the Family Guide to School Readiness and the School Readiness Transition Toolkit. So I just wanted to make sure that you all know where to go to, to, to access these resources and, and to be able to use them with staff within your county. So Okay. Um, good morning, everybody. This is Tracy. And I think Janet's going to assist me by pulling up the um, Help Me Grow website. She found it just a moment ago. But Help Me Grow is a developmental screening and referral program that actually began uh, just a few years ago, I don't know how many, in the state of Connecticut by a pediatrician that actually used to teach at uh, WVU and has links to WVU Medical School. And um, it serves as a She's going to pull up the website here. As I said, it serves as a developmental screening program, and it's a free service, and it connects families with critical development resources for their children. And it is for ages birth through five years of age. And this program uses the Ages and Stages questionnaire, including the Ages and Stages SE, the Social Emotional Screen. And families can call this number and they can enroll their children. Uh, physicians can also enroll families. And you, as local programs, uh, could connect up with the program. And I'm sure they would work with you if you, had, if you wanted to have the program in some way to assist in enrolling children in to help me grow. Once enrolled, they have um, the option to get child development information in addition to the ages and stages questionnaire that will be sent to them at various uh, points and time for ages for their children, critical points. It will be completed, returned back to the Ages and Stages program, 
and they will um, score it and again provide follow-up with that family not only on their child's screen but also um, assist them in making referrals. In addition, this program will communicate those screening results with their uh, medical home or medical provider. And uh, the state is also, we're working on some MOU agreements so that family, so that information may also um, hopefully in the near future be shared with programs that the child may be referred to such as Universal Pre-K or Head Start or Early Head Start or Child Care Centers. So there would be a completed, reliable screen um, that comes along with the child. And again, this program is uh, less than a year old here in West Virginia and we're working to spread the word. And this is the website to learn more information. The contact information is there. This program is coordinated and offered through the Office of Maternal Child and Family Health at the West Virginia Department of Health and Human Resources. Their hotline number is there and they're very friendly and very eager to spread the word about the program around the state. And I know that we're all very vested in developmental screening for children across our state. And I think this is a wonderful opportunity. Um, it, we may see um, some information, sharing of information as the Help Me Grow program grows in relation to transition. Um, this, some of the information that's developed through this process could be available as families transition into pre-K um, in the future. So I felt like we really wanted to address that this morning as we talked about transitions and, and also kind of help put it out there for those for, for everyone who works with children who have, you know, with families with young children, um, it may be beneficial to younger siblings or, or in the home. So we wanted to end with that. Um, I know um, that looking at the chat box, uh, there was one more comment that said, looking ahead, food for thought, our music art and PE specialists need training so they too can be teachers of pre-K also. I, I just wanted to acknowledge that um, absolutely, we're, you, we will, um, thank you Sherry, we'll put that um, in our considerations and things to talk about when we really do tackle this full day, five day. We have um, a webinar scheduled in the late winter, early spring um, on the five day, full day. So I just wanted to make sure that we did acknowledge that we are looking at that as well. That is a, a really good point um, to consider. Um, if there are any questions about transitions um, and you think of them later, maybe as your team is, is meeting later on today, um, you know, feel free to email questions, follow-up questions about this. If you need any of the links, um, don't hesitate to, to let us know and we'll be happy to provide additional information or follow-up information as well. Um, we have a comment in the chat box. This is also important for looking at the kindergarten level being a readiness program. Absolutely. And a lot of the work, I mean, we've done so much work in transition into and, and out of pre-K, and we really do want to expand this as um, a readiness program out of kindergarten as well. So. Uh, we have some good foundations. We're going to build upon those and, and really em empower um, professionals to utilize tools that are that that are there to support them. All right. Well, we're going to finish up and and end our webinar for today. Um, we'd like to thank everyone who participated. Um, and this will be posted um, for review, uh, should be by the end of next week. Um, we'll send something over the listserv to let you know that it's, that it's up on the System of Support web page on our, on our website. So um, we'll send you the link. And Joe Oliverio in Wood County says Merry Christmas from everyone in Wood County. And we'd Thank like to so. wish everyone across the state Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you all.